Welcome to episode number four of Brockport, Maine. My name is Alex Henderson, and joining me on today's show, we have uh, Justin Summers, uh, former uh, Brockport basketball player. Uh, Justin, I, before we start anything, I just I have some stats here that uh, I just want to go over real quick, and correct me if I'm wrong on any of these. So you are the career leader in block, blocks here at Brockport. You were voted in three times to the all Sunyak team. You're a Sunyak champion, and you're voted uh, to the Sunyak All-Decade team. And I mean, there's a whole bunch of more that, you know, we could go on, but there's just too many to list. So first off, you know, congrats on that career. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, no problem. So um, yeah, let's just, you know, get right into some questions here real quick. So first question that I have for you today, um, what was it like to play in two NCAA tournaments? And what was it like compared from the sec last tournament that you played in to the first tournament you played in? Uh, well, first off, the feeling was um, feeling was great. Uh, but to talk about the first time that we went, um, nobody on the team thought that we would make it, you know? So it was just great just being there, you know? I don't think we had like the, the you know, the energy to win, you know, it would just, I guess overwhelming just to be there. Yeah. And last year, we kind of expected it. You know, the whole year that was our goal. We wanted to get there. We wanted to win. That was like our goal the whole year. Yeah. So, and you guys had a good run. Um, but look, going back on your career in basketball, um, how did you get into basketball? And was there someone who influenced you to play, or was it just kind of something you brought, did yourself? Uh, so I've been playing basketball for like 15, 16 years. Um, when I first started playing, it was because of my uncle. You know, I used to go to his games as a as a kid and the atmosphere was crazy. Back then, you know, the fans were like always really into the game. Yeah. And that's kind of like what caught my attention aside from him just teaching me the game, you know, and me just admiring him at the end of the day, I feel like it was. So basketball. So um, kind of fan, little family tradition kind of thing. Exactly, you no know, tradition. When your uncle had, so. Exactly, man. Awesome. So, um, when you're playing though, uh, are you the kind of person who, before a game, are you like very serious, have the headphones on, music, uh, don't talk to me, or are you kind of like the guy who jokes around a little bit? It's kind of like a little bit more easy when it comes to uh, before a game to kind of loosen up and get the teammates a little bit more relaxed? I can say uh, when I first came to Brockport my freshman year, I was trying to be too serious, you know, trying to have a straight face on before every game. But, you know, it caused me to like overthink what I would do in the game. You know, it, it didn't really work for me. You know, so as I got older, you know, sophomore, junior, senior year, I just became more laid back. Like I'd be listening to music, chilling, laughing. And obviously, you know, it worked out good for me, I guess I could say. Yeah, it worked out yeah. pretty well. So <laughs> you got, you, it took you a little while, but you, you got your routine in. Exactly. You know, I found that I was looking for, you know, trying to do too much. Yeah. It's yeah. The simple things that it's it's you being you. That's what exactly. that's what it comes exactly. down to. Be yourself. Couldn't say it better myself. So um so you graduated last semester, uh or last year. You're currently a graduate student here at Brockport, correct? Yes, sir. Um, so do you see yourself uh, having some future role in sport of basketball, whether it's coaching or working in some sort of team setting? Uh, of course, you know, actually, um, due to the SUNY I canceling our basketball season, I wasn't able to, you know, be a graduate assistant on the men's basketball team. So hopefully next year with all of this COVID nonsense, you know, I get to take on that opportunity, you know, and basically coach my alma mater, I guess you could say. But other aside from that and being a graduate assistant, um, I really I want to I want to um, pursue my career, I guess you can say, and try to take forth, you know, at least trying to play, I guess you could say. Yeah. So, and there's definitely many opportunities that you, if you go out there and try that you could get to, so. Exactly. But so as of right now, we haven't seen the last of Justin Summers at, at no, Rockwell. Of course not. Okay, hopefully. So um, so you kind of talked about your uh, career goals a little bit. What um, what are your career goals, whether it has to do with your major, your basketball career? What, um, what do you kind of want to do? Um, I kind of just want to play professional basketball to get gain that experience of traveling, you know, and competing professionally over the world. I don't really want to, you know, 
take it that serious and have like a 15 year career overseas. Um, I just want to gain that experience. But aside from that, I'm currently um, in graduate school, as you said before, I'm pursuing my athletic administration uh, master's degree. So basically, um, I want to be an athletic director um, on the collegiate level, perhaps, you know, hopefully soon. Um, so I guess that, yeah, that's my career goals, you know, aside from basketball professionally. Yeah. It's definitely Brockport has some great connections to help you further that career. Yeah, the best connections, the best connections. So I know our, our athletic director, Eric Hart, he'd be a good one to, you know, get and talk to as well and, you yeah. know, talk with him. So um, going back to uh, kind of your growing up setting and being in back home, what was your favorite place to eat or get food from from back home? Oh, shoot. I ain't going to front. I'm sorry. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, right? In Brooklyn, we got a lot of places, man. I can't even, I think I'm never gonna choose one, but we got a lot of places that you can go to get all types of food. Um, doesn't matter, hot, cold, um, Italian, whatever, you know? Um, but my my favorite place was, it's a spot called Loro's. It's just like this regular corner, corner store. You know, you go there, you get cold cuts, um, different types of sandwiches, and that's the kind of person I am. Um, a cold cut sandwich and I'm good, you feel me? Simple, yeah, just simple, simple nice, nice, nice deli sandwich, so. Or simple you know, as that. Nice, so um, I know you kind of talked about him a little bit more, and I just didn't know, is who is your biggest role model, whether it is in life or growing up, um, whether it was somebody in the NBA that you look up to for playing basketball, who would you say is your biggest role model? Um, I can, I would say my uncle was my biggest role model. Um, from the time I was little um, to this time now, I was always trying to be that much better for, than him, you know, and he always taught me um, just to be myself, you know. Um, he told me so much about basketball. He told me so much about life. And my goal, honestly, was always just to be better than him in the sport of basketball. But as I got older, I started to realize the stories and, you know, the talks that we had, and he was just really trying to show me no, really just trying to teach me the lessons of life. You know, I feel like it's just as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. So, or, um, back going in your time here at Brockport too, um, what's, what's a memory that Brockport that you'll never forget? Something that is just going to stick in your head here for the rest of your life? Hitting that band though. <laughs> Basically not. That me, um, uh, scoring my thousand point. You feel me? That was a that was a crazy moment for me, bro. Like crazy, you know. Um, I was actually thinking about scoring my thousand point on my Brockport visit. You feel me? So yeah. that was like a goal I always had. Um, I didn't get a get. I didn't get to um, accomplish that in high school, you know, due to technicalities or whatever the case may be. But I'll definitely say that's one memory I'll, I'll carry for the rest of my life. And you definitely, I mean, you hit that, and that's kind of crazy to think about when you're coming here to visit uh, yeah. or you even attended here, you're like, I'm going to score a thousand points exactly. here. Exactly. I'm going to score a thousand I mean, points here. That's you, exactly what I said. You definitely Promise did that. that. I mean, what was it? We got here, you scored a career total, 1,342 career points, which ranks 11th all time here at Brockport. Oh, man, so, that 11 is killing me. <laughs> it's killing me. But yeah, man, look, um, a great, great career. You know, I have no regrets. No regrets at all. So, uh, last question that we like to uh, answer or ask before um, we sign off here, but uh, how has Brockport made you? To be honest, bro, I'm probably the definition of being Brockport made. You know, um, before I came to Brockport, you know, I had like a lot of struggles and uh, with my academics throughout middle school and high school. And when I came here, the coaches really focused on that, you know, Prior to Brockport, it was all about basketball. Um, basketball inside of school, basketball outside of school. That was my main focus, you know? But when I came here, my coaches really taught me, and everybody around me, all my professors, you know, everybody, they really taught me um, it's a life after basketball. You know, that was something I didn't really understand. Um, but once I came to Brockport, um, I flourished in my academics, I flourished in my athletics, you know, I, I became a better person, you know? morally i guess you can say but no, yeah man, i'm the definition of rock for me for real for real yeah no that's it's always a good story to see that and how uh you know it, brockport can 
you know, change people and make them with the support of all our professors, great professors and coaches. Mm -hmm. um, and just the, the people surround us, surrounding us in our environment, how they can be so helpful to one another. And it's kind of like one big family here. So yeah, it's, uh, that's, it's exactly that. You know, um, Rockport support system is real. Um, it's real. You know, you can't, you can't rely on that. So many resources that you can go and talk to if you need to, or if you exactly. you need the help. We there's there's help all all around here. So that's, that's around. awesome that you said that, and um, I, I really like that. So that's good. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you. No problem. So uh, before we sign off, do you have any uh, anything you want to say for like a closing statement? Closing statement. Big two three. You know, I'm checking out. You see him right there. Oh yeah. See it right there. Oh yeah. Nah, man. Uh, I just wanna, I just wanna, uh, you know, thank you for yeah. um, giving me the chance to do this, man. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, no uh, problem. A lot. So yeah, no, I definitely appreciate you coming on the show and taking some time out of your day to let me interview you. And uh, no problem, anytime, man, anytime. Yeah, of course. So uh, that's all we have for here today. Uh, Rock Four, episode number four, Justin Summers. Uh, yes, sir. That's all. Two, three. Have it. Thank you, Justin, for coming on the show, and I uh, hope you have a good day. Yes, sir. You too, man. Be safe. Thank you.